that pours her whole heart into ministry. If you, if you would watch her, just this, this event that, that she has organized and planned, she's had sleepless nights, restless days, trying to get people together, trying to get it all organized and ready for you. Five o'clock this morning, she was here. I've never met a woman like her other than my wife. Got to be careful. And I'm so honored that you guys come out to honor her and honor the presence of God and honor Jesus today by wanting to grow in Him, wanting to learn more, to be more, so you can go out into this world that we're living in and reach a people, reach your family, your loved ones. So I'm so grateful for that this morning. Faye's got a lot of, a lot of uh, she's a mom. She loves people well. Um, she's got probably 10 doctorates in something, I don't know. But... <laughs> That doesn't matter. What matters is just her heart. We can have all the head knowledge that we want, but it's the heart knowledge of knowing who we are and whose we are. And Faye does know who she is and whose she is. She belongs to Jesus first. He is her first love. So I'm grateful for that. So Faye, if you will come up here, and I want you guys to stand and give her a warm welcome. And she kicks this thing off. Hallelujah. Thank you, ladies. I can't even begin to tell you how humbled I am that God chose me for such a time as this. That he knew that he could use me to transform your guys' lives, because it isn't me, it's not any of the speakers, it's all about him. And in preparation for this, it started back in January. The only word God gave me was encounter. And I kept searching, what, what about encounter? What about encounter? And an encounter is an unexpected moment. It's an unexpected meeting, meeting where a moment is temporary. So we, we plan our moments. We plan to go to the grocery store. We plan to, to meet up with friends and family, but those are all just temporary. They come and they go, but an encounter is transforming. And that's what, he's, that's what he spoke to me. And then I am a year two Caneo student and in class on last Thursday or a couple Thursdays ago, Pastor Karen was talking and she was sharing about the vision for Caneo this year, and it was to realize God and to encounter Him. And I thought how awesome and confirming it is that that is truly what He wants to do, is He wants to encounter. And she began to talk about Jacob and how he wrestled with God and he walked away marked. And in that moment, God spoke to me. He said, so is Jacob wrestled with me and walked away marked, so will these women Mark, walk away marked because of an encounter with him. So he is here to meet you ladies. He is here to encounter you. We're just going to leave it up to him because it is all about him. So a few technical details. If you've never been here before, the restrooms are to my left, your right, back there by the cafe. Um, it, like I said, this is an honor. You all came in and there was a bag in your seat. Those are just welcome bags. I had reached out to several individuals who I know that just are good prayer warriors, and they sought God for a word for every woman who had registered for the conference. So we put them in the seats, and we're trusting that the word that you received today was the word that God had for you. You know, we prayed over them, we sought the Lord over them, and we trusted Him in that. Now, in one of those bags, is a gold token, just one. So if you have a bag with a gold token, this wonderful vase is yours. 
you can come get it. My, my sister actually has the gold token. <laughs> that was not planned. This was not even me doing this. This is from Jason Abney, the pastor here at Life of Love. This is what's awesome about this vase, is that his father made these from old pieces of wood that um, were of no use. And rather than burning them, he made all these bowls and vases that you see on the wall from just old pieces of wood that everybody had discarded. And look at the beauty in them. So even though the world may think that we're discarded, we are not, we are beautiful because God creates only beauty. Um, so our first speaker today is Tammy DeRosset. She is what? Let's give her a hand, yes. You're good. So we want to honor Tammy. First of all, today is her birthday. So we're going to take a moment and Wes is going to lead us in happy birthday. Hopefully I remember the words. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Tammy. Happy birthday to you. I'll let Tammy do a little bit of her bio, but um, I just want to share first that she is a big influence in who I am and why I am standing here today. She, um, her ministry for inner healing is a path that the Lord put me on back in 2020. And um, I just, I love her obedience to the Lord and, and to step out of even our comfort zones and do what God's called us to do. And that's what she's done. She also does prophetic painting here at the church, all the paintings on the wall she has painted during service. They are for sale. You just have to meet up with her if, you were, if you're interested in any of them. And she's painted one for today's conference as well. But it's just the Lord just shows her and she can kind of talk maybe a little bit about her painting if she if you want just whatever you feel but I just I want to welcome her I want to thank her again for just coming alongside the vision that God has for today and um, like I said she is an amazing blessing and she gives the best hugs I tell everybody that if you need a Jesus hug hug Tammy My, my. <laughs> Thank you all so much. What a blessing um, to be here and, and hang out with some of my favorite people. <laughs> the painting that I did this morning um, is from Isaiah, where it talks about beauty for ashes. And so if you'll notice, it's um, butterflies just emerging from the ashes. And if you think about some of our lives and how it's just been, you know, we've gone through destruction. We've gone through just life experiences that you feel like you truly have just been exhausted. You've just been burnt up, that there's nothing left. But the Lord takes that. He takes your pain. He takes your suffering. And he turns it into something that's absolutely beautiful. That's right. <laughs> and if you think about just the butterfly, you know that that struggle that they have to go through before they emerge is so necessary. You know, if they didn't go through that struggle, they wouldn't be able to fly. They wouldn't be able to rise above, so to speak, you know, circumstances. And so I, I really... Um, 
Faye had shared that she felt like there was going to be someone here this morning that needed this painting, that it was really speaking to them, and I, I believe it is you. I do believe it is you, yes. And so let me gift this to you. Um, yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the Lord just wants you to know how special you are to him and that he loves you with an unfailing love, that you are beautiful. That's right. Amen. 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 Bless you, sweetheart. I'm so glad you're here this morning. God is so incredible. <laughs> he is. The more we get to know him, the better he becomes. Isn't that true? <laughs> Aw. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Very good. <laughs> well, I think uh, Leah has some pictures. There's my family. <laughs> And um, I did want to share, years ago I had a prophetic word that the Lord had saw my pains, my struggles, and that life had been hard, and that he was going to take me in a time, into a time where I would have silver platter experiences. Don't you love that word? <laughs> and so my family is definitely a silver platter experience for me. I have a daughter, Stephanie, and she and her husband, Ryan, have four children. And then my oldest son, Joshua, his wife, Ashley, and they have a daughter, Anola. And then my youngest son, Nicholas, he has since this picture remarried to Casey, and they have two little girls, Madeline and Lily. And so they're precious. <laughs> that was in our backyard, back behind the barn. All right, next picture. Ooh, how about that? <laughs> I have, this is definitely silver platter. Um, <laughs> I got to go to Oahu. My oldest son was stationed there for a time. And so my husband, bless his heart, he rented a Harley Davidson motorcycle for me. Yes. And so I got to ride it around the island with my son, Josh. Isn't that cool? <laughs> So we did. We rode around the island, and I remember Josh looking over at me saying, Mom, keep your eyes on the road, <laughs> because the views were incredible. They were just incredible. This picture is, I got to go on a mission trip to India, and oh my, you know, what an incredible journey that was. Um, I got to go pray with some people at a leper colony. And uh, one of the ladies, when we got there, was on the ground that she couldn't walk. And so the pastor and I, we knelt down beside her and prayed. And there's, they, were, they speak in Hindu, Hindi. And so there was a, a language barrier there, but, but there's no barrier in the Lord, right? <laughs> That's right. And so prayed with her, and we went about our day and, and went and ministered to some other people. And when we were walking back to the bus to get ready to leave, this woman walked to me. She got up and she walked. <laughs> and so I'm bawling, you know, I'm a, I'm a mess and she's a mess and we just embrace. And so anyway, that was an incredible trip. And as we were coming back in the airport, some of the ladies I was with, they said, so Tammy, are you, you know, do you want to go back? And I said, uh, no, not so much. <laughs> It was a wonderful experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but um, boy, you know what, what some of these other countries, how they, what they live through is just truly incredible. So, all right. And that's my Harley. <laughs> uh, it's a soft tail deluxe. My husband bought that for me on our 35th wedding anniversary. <laughs> And his is right beside it. This is um, 
my, my granddaughter, Kaylee, and she went with me to an art show in Avon, and I had two pieces that I submitted, and this is one of the pieces that they, they let me get in. It was awesome. And uh, one of the, well, the curator of the show, he said, Tammy, I'm telling you what, he said, I've got people that are entering this show that have multiple art degrees because I'm self-taught. <laughs> And so he said, I don't mean to be offensive, um, but he said, you know, they have multiple art degrees. He said, but there's something about your paintings that draw people to them. And I've really appreciated that, that compliment. And I shared with him that when I do a painting, I love to take the scripture and write it on the canvas with a watercolor pencil. And so then as I paint, it just fades into the background of the painting because God's word is foundational. And so, anyway, <laughs> so that was, that was a silver platter too. And so this is my oldest son, he and his wife, Ashley and Enola, and they are, uh, he's actually stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina right now. And let's, uh, there, there they are at a ball. Look at all those medals on his chest. <laughs> He is a combat veteran, and right now he is a pl platoon sergeant with the 82nd Airborne Infantry. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all seven grands together. How incredible is that? That doesn't happen often, and so for them to be together in one place was incredible. All right. Yeah, all right. There we go. So what do I have, five minutes now? <laughs> On the top, 29 or 51? 51, wow, we get to hang out and have a good time. That's awesome. I just, yes, sure. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's awesome. He is amazing. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Well, and what I'm talking on today is hearing God. And so I think you heard him. <laughs> I think you heard him when you put that flyer on your refrigerator with the butterflies. That's right. And this is just confirmation this morning that you've, he you've heard him. That's incredible. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I sometimes struggle with sharing who I am and my experience. However, I met a young lady a while back that I, I had met for ministry, and she, <laughs> she made me laugh. She said, so are you a newbie? <laughs> she said, I really don't want to go through all this if you're just a newbie, you know, if you don't have much experience. <laughs> and I had to laugh, and I thought, you know what, a lot of times I don't address that. And so that was a really eye-opener for me. I thought, I really do need to share with people a little bit of my experience so that they can feel maybe a little uh, less <laughs> stressed and a little more at ease. So I'm just going to read a little bit of my education and experience. I graduated from Plainfield High School in 1977. Uh, graduate, well, I'm sorry, I attended IUPUI, Indianapolis University, <laughs> and if that says anything right there, I, I like to move around, I have a hard time <laughs> committing, uh, because I feel like I, I just have so many different interests. Anyway, graduated from the Indianapolis School of Supernatural Ministry, completed SOZO ministry training through Bethel, Redding, California completed cleansing stream ministry training um, and ministry training through the International Society of Deliverance Ministers. 
I'm an ordained minister and have held some of the following positions. I was on the board of directors of Cleansing Stream locally, National Day of Prayer Coordinator, a 25 mile radius prayer initiative at Hoosier Harvest. Uh, was a, on a deliverance ministry team there through Cleansing Stream. Was an elder at New Community Church, a mentor with ISSM, the School of Ministry. Co-founded Higher Ground School of Ministry. Yeah, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Founder of Access Ministries, uh, providing inner healing and deliverance, a uh, member of the International Society of Deliverance Ministers. I'm on the leadership team here at Life of Loves, uh, Loves, <laughs> Love, and provide um, pastoral care. And um, yes, I've ministered over 30 years now. Um, Yes, with inner healing and deliverance, and it truly is my passion. I love to be able to minister to men and women and see them just grab hold of who God has made them to be, to really realize that they are this amazing uh, person and God has a hope and a future for each one. So today, I, I let it out of the bag a little bit ago, I'm, I'm going to talk hearing the voice of God. And we all hear him. We really do. You may not think you do. And sometimes I hear people say, well, I'm just not hearing him. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail. And so what I'd like to begin with is just sharing some of my own personal experiences with how I've heard him in these different ways, and then we'll go over how God speaks to us, the different ways that he speaks to us. If you're feeling hindered, what we can do to get beyond that, and so we'll go over those steps. So I wasn't raised in a Christian home, a um, lot of dysfunction, and I know that there are many of us that can say the same thing, just a lot of dysfunction in my family. My father was an alcoholic. My mother was, was ill while I was growing up. Um, I remember as a small child getting ready to go to school and I couldn't wake her up, you know, to help, help me get ready for school or anything like that. And, um, you know, all those years of growing up in that really did a number on me as far as knowing my, my identity. And so, um, didn't really have much of a relationship with the Lord. I know he spoke to me when I was 13, and I ended up going to a church. I rode my bike, <laughs> rode my bike to a neighborhood church, and went forward and um, said a sinner's prayer and was baptized at the age of 13. But once again, my home life was such that I didn't have a support system, didn't have anyone encouraging me in that. Um, and so, you know, you, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I feel like this world that we're in, we're just kind of thrown in and you just got to try to figure it out. And so I was trying to figure it all out. And so, like I said, I did receive the baptism, um, well, not baptism of the Holy Spirit, but just dedicated my life to the Lord then. Uh, I lost my mother when I was, I'm sorry, I lost my dad when I was 19 and my mom when I was 23. And I've lost both of my sisters. And, you know, it's been a lot to go through in my lifetime to just really lose those that, that you love. And once again, just to try and process those things. I will say that when my um, mother died, I was a Christian at that time. And so what a difference. You know, when my dad bought, passed away, I, I didn't know the Lord. And so just that turmoil, turmoil that you go through and just questioning things um, was pretty intense. So anyway, in a nutshell, dysfunction. Uh, end up marrying Clay, my husband, of 41 years. <laughs> woo woo. <laughs> Yay. And when I had my first child, that's, that was the first time that I really heard the voice of God. I was holding her in my arms, 
and I looked in the face of this amazing little baby, and I experienced a love like I had never known before. It wasn't the love of, you know, a, like my family love. It wasn't the love for my husband. It was so deep. It was intense. <laughs> and so I'm holding this baby, and I hear the Lord speak to me, and he says, Tammy, I love you more than you love this child. And I thought, there's no way. <laughs> you know, are you kidding me? I don't think so. And so, forgive me, you know, I was, uh, but right away, I just, you know, didn't think that that was possible for God to say that He loved me that much. And so, I remember uh, shortly after that going to a Bible study. My sister invited me to a Bible study. And the pastor's wife came up to me afterwards, and she said, do you have a prayer request? You know, can I pray with you about anything? And at that time, Clay didn't have a job. Um, I was the only one working, and I said, yeah, my husband needs a job. We pray. I go home, and that afternoon, guess what? He had a job. <laughs> I was amazed. It just floored me. And I thought, wow. Who is this God? You know, I began to just say, who is he? You know, the fact that he said he loves me more than I love my child, and then he gives my husband a job. And so I was on a hot pursuit, let me tell you, to find out who this God was, and I wanted to know all I could about him. And so I did. I just poured in, I, you know, I was going to church and, and just reading everything I could get my hands on. And this was so funny. I remember when my kids were, you know, just really little, hearing a knock on the door. And I thought, what's that? So I get up, I go to the door, I open the door, there's no one there. I thought, okay, just kind of blow it off. And so then go uh, the next night, same thing happens. In the morning, I hear a knock on the door. I get up, go to the door, open it, no one there. Okay, <laughs> blow it off. The next day, <laughs> the same thing happens. I hear a knock on the door, go to the door, open it up, no one there, and then it dawned on me. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, this is you, God. And he was getting me up early in the morning to seek him. And I, like I said, I was just new to all of these things by not being raised in a Christian home. And so I feel like he threw me in the deep end when I got saved, and I just kind of, like I said, had to figure some of these things out. And so that was incredible. And the scripture says, he stands at the door and he knocks, and he wants us to invite him in to share a meal with him. And so that verse was so real to me that he wanted me to, to sit down at a table and eat. He's the bread of life, right? And so that's, that was the meal time, just getting to know him and spending that first thing in the morning with him. And I'm a firm believer in that. <laughs> and so he was speaking to me through a knock on the door. Isn't that, isn't that something? I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I was very resistant. I did not really want it. I had heard people praying in tongues at church, and it kind of freaked me out. I didn't know exactly how to handle that. And I remember my mother uh, years ago when I was little saying that tongues were not for today. And then I, I had a sister say, you don't do that, do you? You know, and they were just like, oh, no, no. And so uh, a neighbor of ours was pastoring a church and came and got me and, well, we asked me to come over to their house. So I did. And they, they informed me that because I didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that my prayers were like going up stairs and their prayers were like going up in an elevator. <laughs> I was ticked off, quite honestly. <laughs> I was really upset. And so I went home and I'm, I'm saying, God, I just don't believe that because you've answered my every prayer and I'm just, you know, I know that you're real and that you hear me and so on. 
Well, three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> his Holy Spirit comes on me, and I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> And so I feel him so strong in the room. Oh, my goodness. You know, he's just all over me. And I said, no. I said, no, I don't want it. You know, because I was fearful. I really was. I was afraid. And then when I got up the next morning, I repented. I had such conviction. <laughs> and it's like, Lord, I am so sorry. I said, please forgive me. And if that's really something you want me to have, then I receive it. You know, I, I'll, I'll receive it. And so uh, he just gave me a few syllables and um, it expounded, but I didn't go to church for like three months <laughs> because I was so afraid that tongues would just take over <laughs> and I wouldn't be in control. Ah. Oh. So once again, I had to figure that out too. It's all right, you know, that he lets you control that. And it was just uh, quite a learning experience once again. So I did receive the baptism and it was like night and day. It was incredible. Um, Clay was not spirit filled at that time. <laughs> And he said, it's all in your head. You're making it up. You know, this isn't, no, God doesn't work that way. And he said, you've become a fanatic. <laughs> and I went in the house. We were on the porch. I went in the house. I started crying. I said, God. And he said, it's okay. You are a fanatic. <laughs> So, so that's what, that's what, it, yep, I'm a fanatic. I am sold out. You know, you're not going to convince me anything else. So I thought that was, that was pretty funny. So I'm a fanatic. I'm going to church. I was going to the assembly. Of God, Shelly, bless her heart. My, we've been friends for so many years and uh, just going through this walk with her has been amazing. And so we were going to Assembly of God here in Martinsville. And I remember um, just praying for people. I prayed for a lady in a goiter just completely dissolved on her neck. I prayed for um, breast cancer. The Lord healed it. I had another lady that her arms were had opened wounds. And while we prayed, we saw them completely disappear. And so I was flying high. <laughs> I would feel the anointing, and I would pray for people, and it was just incredible. And then it, like, dried up. I didn't hear him anymore, or at least I didn't feel like I was hearing him. And I wasn't feeling that anointing when I would pray. And so I asked the Lord about, you know, I'm just crying out, God, where are you? And why am I not hearing you like I was? And... It was probably, um, I'm thinking probably about a month that I just was desperate for him and asking him to show up again like I had known him. And finally, after, I mean, I was on the kitchen floor crying out, God, where are you? And I heard him finally speak. And he said, Tammy, do you believe my word is true? And I said, yes, Lord, I do. I do believe your word is true. He said, then you know that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And it was just an incredible journey for me uh, because he made me realize, helped me to realize that we can't go by our feelings. You know, we can't go by, you know, you have this sensation and well, then that's God. No, he's with us all the time. He never leaves us. You cannot go by your feelings. The Bible says we lay hands on the sick and they recover. It doesn't say you have to feel it. it. doesn't say you have to feel this strong anointing. It says, as believers, that's our promise. And so we just have to know God's word is true. And so I was just so thankful <laughs> that he took me through that time of just really figuring out that he is true, he is faithful, that he's always with us. And um, 
it was funny because during that period of time, a niece came over and needed prayer. And so she sat at the kitchen table and I prayed for her. She goes out in the spirit. And I thought, well, that's great because I'm not feeling a thing. Glad she is, you know. <laughs> oh. So that's, you know, some ways that the Lord has spoke to me. And I've got some, some other um, examples as well. You know, when he was taking me through my own healing journey, you know, all that stuff that you go through, you do have to face it at some time. You know, no matter how much you might not want to, it's important that you do. And so he was helping me to walk through those things. And he um, just really set me free of guilt, shame, and condemnation. Um, I struggled there for a while of feeling like I had to remain guilty I, because of the sins of my past. I felt like I didn't deserve happiness or joy. And the Lord let me find out that uh, it was actually a type of pride. You know, when you say you can't forgive you, then you're saying that what Jesus did on the cross wasn't good enough. And it is good enough, you know, and you have to come to that place where your past failures, all the things that you've done wrong, that you have to give those over to the Lord. You absolutely do. And uh, there's a scripture in Psalm, it says that God forgives the guilt of our sin. And when I read that, I knew that I couldn't remain guilty any longer. You know, I had to give that to Him and let Him set me free. And it was incredible. I felt like, I, really, I was in my living room and I felt like my guts were being ripped out, you know, as He's setting me free from these things. And it was funny because just like a day or two later, Shelly and I actually talked on the phone and I was sharing with her what I had gone through. Well, she had just come back from a women's retreat and she had received freedom. And so we're sharing these things together. And she said, wow, I had to pay $170 for this <laughs> retreat. <laughs> and she said, God did yours for free. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> so I'll never forget that. I laughed. I thought that was just too funny. <laughs> oh, there's my little cursor. Yes. Um, I also remember just having some intense times of anger and rage. And the Lord revealed to me that it was because I didn't have that love and that nurturing as a child. And I didn't know how to really process, you know, this love that he was giving me, this, these relationships of being a mom. And I remember one day in particular, my two-year-old son grabbing him and feeling such rage and out of control. And I broke, and I just began to cry. And I said, God, I can't do this. I need you to help me. And so he walked me through releasing these things to him. And then he said, Tammy, I need to heal your heart. And I said, okay. And I was afraid it was going to be painful, just like the guilt, shame, and condemnation. And so I kind of avoided him for a little while. I remember being in the living room and feeling his presence really strong. And I thought, nope, I am not ready, not ready for this. And I was on, uh, I got on the phone with a friend, cordless phone back then. <laughs> and I ended up talking to them and I go outside and I walk around to the back of the house and there on a, a table on the back patio, my youngest son had a Jesus action figure. <laughs> and I started laughing. I said, I'm sorry, I've got to go. He's back here too. <laughs> and so... <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, God, I'm going to deal, deal with it. So I had to go in and just sit with him and just let him minister healing to my heart. And I did have to go through forgiveness. You know, I had to forgive my dad. I didn't really want to forgive him. 
but I knew that I had to. Once again, it's not an option. You know, a lot of these things that we go through, it's not an option. You don't get a choice. Or if you do make a choice, it's the wrong one. So make sure you choose to forgive because it's going to be good. It's going to be good for you. And so I did. I forgave my dad. And what was amazing to me is that anger, that rage, that bitterness that I felt for him because of just the abuse that he put my mom through and our family through. Um, as when I forgave him, it's like then that gave the Lord permission to come in and bring healing to my emotions. And so over time, I would still have those memories. But what I noticed was I no longer had the bitterness. I no longer had the anger or the rage, but I actually had an understanding and a compassion for my father. And it was just incredible, you know, that the Lord took that mess and once again made it into something beautiful. That's right. And that's, that's what he does. So that was a little bit of my journey as far as, you know, just inner healing and um, getting to know the Lord better. Uh, he does. He just speaks to us through so many ways. Um, I remember one time <laughs> I'd been in a car accident and the police report didn't look favorable for me, so I thought. And so I went to the kitchen and I decided to drown my sorrows in a bought bag of chocolate chips. <laughs> So I reach up in the cabinet and I pull out the chocolate chips and down falls an eraser that says, God loves you. <laughs> so he spoke to me through that eraser. And so I said, <laughs> so I put the chips back and, and just prayed, you know, God, thank you for speaking to me and letting me know that in this, that you do love me. And testimony. You know, it did work out in our favor. I was very thankful for that. And so the insurance paid everything and it was all good. Um, this was a, another cool story. You know, he, God can speak to us in creation. Clay and I had gone on a vacation to Florida and we're, I was sitting on the beach and he was, Clay was up in the hotel room. And so I was just sitting there by myself and I'm enjoying the, the beautiful waves, you know, the sound, the breeze, and I'm looking at the clouds and up in the clouds, I see numbers, four, two, seven. And I thought, well, that's wild. You know, I usually, you, people will talk about seeing animals or, you know, different shapes in the clouds. And I saw numbers and I had my phone with me. And so I decided to look up Psalm 42, seven. And it says in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? So I'm a mess on the beach, you know, because <laughs> he's speaking to me through the clouds. And so I'm just crying, you know, that he would do that for me and just give me that encounter with him. So, yes. So those are a few of my stories. And uh, it's like daily, isn't it? You know, when you walk with him, he truly is. He's in every moment of every day. And he is speaking in so many different ways. And he wants you to know that this morning. And so uh, he talks to us through others. He talks to us speaks to us through creation. I gave one of those examples, you know, of the clouds. He speaks to us through our senses, you know, our eyes, our ears, the smell. How many of you smelled the fragrance of the Lord before? Isn't it incredible? Oh, yay! I love that. You know, I love that, that he shows up and you smell this sweet fragrance. I remember ministering to a, a gentleman at the house and when he came in my front door, um, he said, I smell a waterfall. <laughs> and I thought, how incredible was that, you know, for him to smell a waterfall. And I shared with him earlier that evening, I had prayed and the Lord gave me a vision of a waterfall out at our driveway so that when people come in, you know, it's just a washing and a cleansing. And so that was really neat to hear him say that. Um, taste, touch. You know, and I know that 
probably all of us in this room have felt him, you know, felt his presence, felt his, just his peace come upon you, his joy, his love. And so pay attention to that. You know, just um, I'm really going to pray today at the end of my little time that the Lord would give us those eyes to see, ears to hear, minds and hearts to know and understand that we would be aware of his speaking because he is. Um, you know, taste. Don't you love it that it says taste and see that the Lord is good? And so there's a couple senses there. You know, we're tasting, but yet he's opening our eyes to just see how good he really is. Um, let's see. Just as an example, you know, I shared with you about the gentleman smelling the uh, waterfall and I also had a lady come from ministry that, you know, I said, oh, are you seeing anything? Nope, not seeing a thing. <laughs> are you hearing anything? Nope, not hearing a thing. And I said, well, let's just press into that a little bit. And what ended up happening is uh, she was feeling cold. And she didn't realize that that was actually the Lord's presence. Some people feel cold. Some people might feel warmth. Some people might feel tingling sensation. And so what I love about the Lord is that he orchestrates all of these things just for you. <laughs> he really does. He knows what's going to get your attention. And so that's incredible. Another woman that I administered to, she saw colors. And I remember... Um, you know, just talking with her about some of the colors and, and what those might mean. And so, once again, don't um, think that you're not hearing from him. And then the Bible. Oh, my goodness. Don't you love the Word of God and just how he speaks in, in his Word? And I'm sure that, once again, most of you have experienced reading God's Word and having a verse just really catch your attention, and you know that God's speaking to you in that. And so then you take that verse, and you look at it, and you break out the Strong's Concordance, and you, you know, look at it in different versions to just really grab hold of what God's saying to you in that scripture. And that's been, you know, just the, the best of times, you know, reading scripture. And quite honestly, you've got to have that. You have got to have a deposit in you of the Word of God. You've, you have to. In fact, that's what's going to help you recognize when you're really hearing the voice of God, because you have to have an understanding of who He is and what His character is like. He's a good God. He is. He's a good Father. And if you've experienced things in your life that have made you think that He's not good, then those are some lies that you're believing that need to come down, because He truly is good. If, if you think about the fruit of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He's all that and more. And so we, that's why it's so important to know the Word of God so that you can know His character. So if you say you're hearing, oh, you're beautiful, <laughs> you're the head, you're the tail, yeah, that's right, I am, because that's what God's Word says about you. If you hear, I'm no good, I can't do anything, nope. That's not the Word of God. You know, that's not what His Word says about you. And so you don't receive those. You take those thoughts captive into the obedience of Christ. And so that's, once again, I can't stress it enough. You need to know the Bible, and you really need to just let Him speak to you through it. Um, the Lord also speaks in circumstances. Um, I love the fact that it'll just be on your heart that you need to buy a certain gift for someone. And then you do that, and you give them that gift, and it was perfect from God. You know, it was just for them. I remember years ago having just a thought, oh, I'd love to have one of those birdhouses that are all decorated. Just a thought. You know, I didn't pray about it. Oh, God, I need, <laughs> I need a birdhouse. Uh, but a... <laughs> A friend, a friend of mine 
brought a birdhouse. And it's like, oh my gosh, I just thought that. You know, and then the next thing I know, I have a birdhouse. And so what I love in that is that she was hearing God. She really was. And I knew that that was a gift from him. And so don't brush those things off. You know, don't think, oh, that's silly or that's, you know, that's not the Lord. Because he does. He uses those circumstances to speak to us. And how many of you have had maybe a person on your heart that you have felt that you need to reach out to and give a phone call? And it's like a lifetime, I mean, a lifeline at that time when you call them and, hey, you've been on my heart. I've been thinking about you and how God is in every bit of that. You know, that's, that's incredible as well. And so we do. We need to know the truth. Um, and once again, if there are lies you're believing, just ask the Lord. You know, Lord, are there lies that I'm believing? And what, what is the truth? What would you say to me in this situation? So we're going to dispel any lies right now that you cannot hear God because John 10, 4 and 5 says, when he's brought out all of his own and he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice and they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they don't recognize a stranger's voice. Isn't that reassuring? You know, to know that you are God's sheep and that you do hear his voice. Sometimes we just need to know how he's speaking, and sometimes we just need to know how to recognize that. Um, There's another scripture that says, Behold, I do a new thing. Are you not aware of it? And so that lets me know that we need to pray for that awareness. And I, I do that all the time. It's like, Lord, give me an awareness of your voice. Give me an awareness of your presence in my life. And he, he loves to. He loves to do that. Um, let's see, John 10, 27, 28 says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never, never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. And isn't that good to know, you know, that there's nothing that can separate you from God's love, that you're secure in Him, and that He loves you. So we've talked about how we hear God. Um, the different ways that we hear him. Um, And so I just want you to really think about that. You know, are you hearing him clearly? And if not, are there any walls? Uh, Forgiveness was a big thing for me. I had to walk through some forgiveness. And part of the ministry that uh, that I do is Sozo Ministry. And one of the tools that we use is the Father's Ladder. And go over, you know, what was your relationship with your dad? your earthly father. Was it good? Was it bad? If you need to forgive him, do that. Um, And what we've found out is that oftentimes, if we have those negative experiences growing up, we can look at God through that influence, through our experiences. And so we have to recognize, once again, that, like for an example, um, a young lady that her father was, wasn't a part of her life. You know, he wasn't present, um, wasn't there at all. She had a step bat, stepdad, but the, the real dad was never there. And so she did. She felt like God was distant, that he wasn't there for her. And that was a lie. And so as you go through these steps, just recognize, you know, once again, what's a lie and what's the truth. And the same thing for moms. You know, sometimes moms are there, sometimes they're not. And that's the role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your nurturer. He's your guide. You know, he's your comforter. And so if you're struggling with that part of God, once again, just release forgiveness to, to your mom or to anyone else for that matter and make sure that your relationship with the Lord is intact with God the Father, with God the Son, and with God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So forgiveness, like I said, is key. You want to make sure that you do that. And then any walls, any walls that you have erected. And I know that um, we're pretty good (laughs) about putting up those walls, especially if we've been hurt over and over and over again, you know, just to put walls up of self-protection. And the Lord will allow that for a time. He does. And there are boundaries. There's a little difference there. You know, we're definitely supposed to set boundaries in our life for our protection, uh, especially if there are toxic people or abusive people in your lives. You want to make sure that you have boundaries in place, but we don't want any walls between us and the Lord. And so I just encourage you, after you walk through just forgiving those that have hurt you, to also ask the Lord, is there a wall between us? And ask him what that wall might be. And if it's safe for that wall to come down. Um, Just in ministry, uh, ministry time, once again, there was a gentleman that he saw a wall. The Lord let him see a wall. And when we uh, pressed in and asked the Lord what it was, it was a wall of unforgiveness. And so when he was able to release forgiveness to his dad, that wall came down. And then he was hearing the Lord more clearly. So these are, once again, some things that you can walk through, some tools that you can have that will help you to hear the the voice of the Lord more clearly. And you do need to know your identity, who you are, who God has made you to be as a son or a daughter of, of God. And... I know for me, it took a little time. (laughs) It really did. It took some time to realize that he made me, and he made me who I am to be. Um, And I just declare that over each one of you today, that you are who God created you to be, that he knew your hair color, he designed your eye color, he designed your frame, he designed every part of you. And he said... It's good. It's good. That's right, because he just loves you so much. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Yes. So one of the exercises I like to have um, people that come for ministry do is to look in a mirror. (laughs) And so I challenge you, you know, if that's something that you don't do or can't do very well, to do that, to have a mirror and go up to that mirror and look at yourself. But the challenge is to look at yourself as God's creation. Don't look at wrinkles or, (laughs) you know, fine lines here or there. Don't do that. You know, that don't be tempted to do that. But truly look at yourself as who God's created you to be. And you're beautiful. You are. How many of us can look at another person and we can appreciate the God-given beauty that they have? Well, you can do that for yourself as well. You honestly can. You know, you can look at a beautiful mountain range or you can look at a beautiful sunset and you can appreciate God's creation. Well, you can do that for yourself as well. It might take a little bit of a, a practicing. You know, we practice the truth, but it can be done. And so the Lord just wants you to know how loved you are, and how valued uh, you are to him. Uh, Faye, how much ministry time were you? Okay. All right. All right. Okay, thank you. Um, these are just some really precious stories, and then I'll, I'll uh, finish with a prayer, and we'll have a little time of ministry. Um, I love to walk people through, once again, hearing the Lord's voice, and one of the tools I, I love to use, too, is to just have that person close their eyes and then say, Jesus, do you love me? And we know what the answer is, right? It's yes. <laughs> it's an emphatic yes. And so um, just... One one time I was at a Joyce Meyer conference. I was on the altar team, and a Catholic woman came up for prayer. 
And I said, I, I want you to do this. Close your eyes. Ask Jesus if he loves you. And so she did that, and she immediately just started crying. She said, I didn't know we could talk to God. <laughs> you know? She thought that you just had to you know, read the Bible and, and figure it out from there. And so the Lord spoke to her and said, yes, I love you with an everlasting love. Isn't that beautiful? And so I, I've had a great time doing this with my grandkids. What fun. <laughs> and so one of my granddaughters, I had asked her to close her eyes and ask the Lord if he loved her. And she started smiling right away. And I said, so what did he say? And she said, he said, yes, he loves me. And she s closed her eyes right again, or, you know, right away again. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, I want to ask him another question. <laughs> I said, okay, go for it. And so then uh, she was smiling again. I said, so what did you ask? She said, I asked him if he liked unicorns. <laughs> and I said, what did he say? She said, he said, yes, I do. <laughs> and so I just thought that was so sweet. Uh, so um, there's like five steps to hearing God. Believing. You know, we talked about that earlier. Believe, because God's word says that you do hear him. Um, repent, you know, if there's any lies that you have believed about not hearing him. Repent for those things. And just ask the Lord to restore you to right relationship with him. And then believe, you know, believe that he speaks to you through creation, through his word, through your senses, through other people. Um, however he wants to speak, he, you know, give him that permission to do that in your life. And then for those of you that haven't had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, ask for that as well, because it truly does. It just opens up a whole new dimension when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just for that Holy Spirit to be your guide and direct you. Um, also, clear any busyness. Like if you're really wanting to hear the voice of God, to just get alone with Him, sit with Him, the Bible tells us to be still and know that I am God. Still can also translate as striving. And so the Lord wants you to just sit with him and let him practice it. And there's no shame in that, none at all. I remember years ago, I'm just feeling kind of despondent and it's like, God, am I ever going to get this? And he, I could just see a big smile on his face. He said, no, practice the truth. There's a scripture that says we're to practice the truth. And he doesn't get upset. You know, think about uh, for those of us that are parents, when your little kid's trying to learn something, you're not upset with them. You know, you're cheering them on. You know, you're wanting them to be the best that they can be. And so, um, be, you know, clear that busyness and sit and be still with him. And then thankfulness. It's so important that we be thankful. You know, the Bible tells us that we come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And so when you put yourself in a position of thankfulness, of gratitude, amazing things happen. And so I just want to encourage you with that too. So, all right. Well, I'm going to pray over you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to pray over you, and then we're going to have a time of ministry. Um, for those of you, once again, that don't feel like you're hearing from the Lord well, for you to come forward and let us just agree with you in prayer. And I also just want to pray a, a, just a corporate blessing right now. Lord, I just want to thank you so much for each and every person that's here within the sound of my voice. God, I ask today that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, minds and hearts to know and to understand. Lord, you tell us in your word that you do a new thing. Are we not aware of it? And so, Father, we're asking that you would give us an awareness of your presence, that you would give us an awareness of your voice. Lord, we know that your voice and a relationship with you, it all boils down to intimacy. We were created to worship you. We were created to be intimate with you. And so, Lord, that's our heart's desire, is to know you, to love you, to serve you. And so, Lord, we just bless you today for who you are. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. So the ministry team, if you would come forward.